If you thought Canada had all the best monthly high dividend stocks, you haven't looked at America yet. Holy scary pumpkins, let's do this! Many of us love those monthly dividends, and we have some pretty good ones on the north side of the border. However, America may just have some dividend stocks that will make you want to open a USD account right away. I currently keep my American stocks in my Wealthsimple Pro USD accounts. Before we scare up some American passive income, tell me in the comments if you have a USD account. I am always grateful when you drop in the home of free financial content on YouTube. While you are here, please subscribe as you don't want to miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. America is the largest market in the world and honestly to ignore it is to ignore a lot of opportunity to make some money. Understandably, many Canadians are a little scared about withholding taxes on dividends and as a result many do try to avoid getting too deep into the American dividend market. Just to clear it all up before we get into that list, if you place high dividend American stocks into your RRSP, you get everything as the current tax treaty between Canada and the United States provides a withholding tax exemption in registered accounts, though the U.S. only recognizes the RRSP as a registered account. If you place American dividend stocks in your TFSA, you are going to lose 15% of your dividends. This means a 20% dividend yield will give you 17%, which is still really good. I know there's at least one of you out there who will be like, wait a minute, Candace, 20 minus 15 is 5. That, of course, is a very easy mistake to make, but the 15% is 15% of that 20%, so that all works out when you do the math to 17%. The last place you can hold your American dividend stocks is in your cash or personal account. In this case, you still do get hit with that 15% withholding tax, but you can claim it back at tax time. However, you still have capital gains and, of course, the taxes on those dividends to deal with when you're holding it outside of a registered account. For today's list, I am looking at stocks with yields over 10% that also have at least $100 million or better when it comes to market cap. I am also excluding any dividend stocks with payout ratios over 100% as those tend to not be sustainable long term. Although a lot of those high dividend payers do come in the form of a fund or an ETF and those do not always have payout ratios. Anyway, without any further ado, let's hit this. Up first we have Western Asset Emerging Markets Debt Fund Inc with a ticker of EMD. Based out of New York, they are an investment strategy that invests in emerging market countries such as Mexico, Indonesia, and the United Arab Emirates. They have a market market cap of $485.58 million and their beta is very stable at 0.82. Where a lot of the companies we are looking at today are funds, we are not going to worry about their earnings per share or their PE ratios. We are simply here for the dividends, maybe a little growth on a couple of cases. They have a dividend yield of 11.81% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.08 cents USD per share. They do not provide a payout ratio for us to peruse. They have not missed a dividend in the last five years. However, their dividend did decrease three times over that period, dropping from 10 to 8 cents. Growth-wise, in 2021, they had an ROI of negative 5.17%, which has a positive total return of 6.64%. This year, 2022, has been quite brutal for them, and they have an ROI thus far of negative 37.17%. Even though we are not here for the growth, honestly, the growth of this one is still a cause for alarm. Whether that means they're a really good deal right now or an extra helping of concern, well, that's up to you. Up next. We have Ellington Financial with a ticker of EFC. Based out of Old Greenwich, Connecticut, they are a specialty finance company specializing in mortgage-backed securities, and they also invest in corporate debt and security equities. They have a market cap of $799.24 million, and their beta is a little more volatile at 1.82. They have a dividend yield of 13.69% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.15 cents USD per share. They have a payout ratio of 98.90%, which is a little high. They have not missed a single dividend in the last five years. However, they did decrease their dividend a wee bit due to the pandemic, but 
they have increased it back to where it was since then. Growth-wise, in 2021, they had an ROI of 20.78%, and factoring in their dividends, we have a total return of 34.47%. Holy banana bread, that is not bad. 2022 was not so great, though, as they have an ROI thus far of negative 23.57%. A little worse than the market, but still within an acceptable standard deviation. Even with that pump in 2021, Ellington Financial is by no means a growth stock. They are set up to pay out their profits as dividends, and they are truly a solid dividend player. That takes us to Sabine Royalty Trust with a ticker of SBR. Based out of Dallas, Texas, they are a royalty company that acquires the rights to various mineral properties, including undeveloped oil and gas royalty properties in the southern United States. They have a market cap of $1.21 billion, and their beta is a little less volatile at 0.57. They have a dividend yield of 14.42% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $1.1.7 USD per share. They do not have a payout ratio. They have also not missed a dividend in the last five years. Their dividend has actually been steadily increasing over that time. It has grown from 15.7 cents five years ago to $1.1.7 today. That's, that's fantastic. I have a feeling their growth is going to be kind of interesting. In 2021, they had an ROI of 48.81% and factoring in their dividends, we have a total return of 63.23%. Holy banana bread, that is really not too shabby at all. Oh boy, 2022 smiled and said, hey, hold my beer, and then came back with an ROI of 97.98% thus far. With a total return, we are looking to be well above a 100% return on this one. Holy friggin' banana bread. This is a stock that is on fire. With both growth and dividends, I will only say that I held this stock and I sold it after 2021, taking my profits and not thinking they would have an insane 2022. I plan to reinvest that into some cheap blue chip stocks. When time travel becomes a thing, I may have to go back and slap myself for that move. Up next, we have Virtus Total Return Fund with a ticker of ZTR. Based out of Old Greenfield, Massachusetts, they are a closed-end diversified management company that provides solutions to investors from retail all the way up to institutional. They have a market cap of $304.73 million, and their beta is fairly close to the average at 1.19. They have a dividend yield of 15.19% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.08 cents USD per share, they do not have a payout ratio. Once again, broken record, they have not missed a single dividend in the last five years. They did, of course, decrease their dividend from 13 to 8 cents at the pandemic. Growth-wise, in 2021, they had an ROI of 11.55%, and factoring in their dividends, we have a total return of 26.74%. 2022 was not so great, though. They have an ROI thus far of negative 32.53%. This is significantly worse than the market, but not really in the same Danger Will Robinson zone as EMD. Nonetheless, there should still be extra caution for this one for sure. Up next, we have Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF with a ticker of QYLD. Based out of New York, this ETF uses a covered call strategy to enhance returns on their investments within the NASDAQ 100. They have a market cap of $6.27 billion, and their beta is a little less volatile at 0.70. They have a dividend yield of 15.98% that is paid out monthly in the amount of $0.16.3 cents USD per share. They do not have a payout rate ratio. They have also, of course, not missed a single dividend in their last five years. Their dividend does, though, change quite a bit, as it is more of a floating dividend. In the last five years, it has ranged from 16.3 to 24.7 cents. We currently are at the bottom of that range. Before we jump into growth, this one also does have a management expense ratio of 0.60%. Growth-wise, in 2022, they had an ROI of 1.16%. And factoring in their dividends, we have a total return of 17.14%. 2022 was not good, as they have an ROI thus far of negative 28.91%. Definitely worse than the market, but it is still almost within an acceptable standard deviation. Maybe a tiny bit of extra caution with this one. 
Now we have Oxford Lane Capital with a ticker of OXLC. Based out of Old Greenwich, Connecticut, they are a finance company specializing in collateralized loans, including credit card receivables and auto loans. They have a market cap of $843 million, and their beta is a little more volatile at 1.14. They have a dividend yield of 18.25% that is paid out monthly in the amount of 7.5 cents USD per share. They do have a payout ratio, and it comes in at 96.77%. They have not missed a dividend in their last five years. They did decrease their dividend quite a bit due to the pandemic, dropping it from 13.5 cents to 6.8 cents. Growth-wise, in 2020, one, they had an ROI of 49.04%. And factoring in those dividends, we have a total return of 67.29%. That is not too shabby at all. 2022, though, well, once again, it was not really that good. They had an ROI thus far of negative 30.98%. A wee bit and a little bit more worse than the market. This is another one I would definitely add in a little bit of extra caution with it. At the top of our charts, we have Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund with a ticker of CLM. Based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, they invest in other closed-end investment companies and ETFs with a 3% limit on total shares they may own in any one particular company or ETF. They have a pretty big market cap of $1.69 billion, and their beta is a little more volatile at 1.17. They have a dividend yield of, yep, yeah, it's big, 25.86% that is paid out monthly in the amount of 18.1 cents USD per share. They, of course, do not have a payout ratio. They have also not missed a dividend in their last five years. However, they did decrease their dividend a few times, but did raise it coming into 2022. Growth-wise, in 2021, they had an ROI of 22.56%. And factoring in those dividends, we have a total return of 48.42%. That is not too shabby. 2022 was, well, it was a little dismal, and they have an ROI thus far of negative 42.13%. That is a concerning number, no doubt. This is a mind-numbing dividend, but with a drop of 42%, you have to bring extreme caution to this party, especially when you zoom out to their 10-year chart. They have been losing value for a very long time, and I, for one, would not be comfortable leaving this stock unattended. These are some seriously good dividends, but as always, you really want to do your due diligence and bring lots of caution when you are dealing with very high yield dividends. Some of these look quite fantastic and, well, there's also a few that I would be worried they're going to give me the trick and not the treat. The fun does not have to end here. Check out my video on seven high dividend Canadian stocks that I will link on the left. Otherwise, check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.